All right, now for part two, uh, Nick and Steve are going to talk to us about going from concept to profitable product. And uh, all the stuff that's involved in doing that, at least in their case. And uh, so let's let's listen to them. Uh, introduce yourselves any more than you want to. I mean, you can kind of probably remember who you are, but um, uh, you're a successful entrepreneur, so go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm Steve Kula, I'm an electrical engineer. Uh, I deal mostly with analog, analog video, and also do digital radio. So, but we, we started this company in 2014 with the intent to make products that let you play your old retro consoles on new TVs and new display technologies. And so, that's our vision, to be able to preserve uh, the games that we played as kids on like 10, 20 years down the road, 30 years down the road. So that's, that's me. That's our partner again. Yeah, I'm Nick. I've uh, known Steve since we were freshmen in high school. Um, also studied electrical engineering in college. Um, gone on to do more on the digital and software side of things uh, since then. Um, but uh, today we want to talk a little more in depth about kind of the steps we took to be profitable. Of course, that's paying ourselves zero dollars, <laughs> so profitable is kind of up in the air still. Um, so yeah, it's not going to be like a super deep dive technical talk, um, but feel free to ask technical questions. Um, and either in the beginning or at the end, or during the talk or at the end, I'm fine. So if you want to interrupt, go ahead. Um, we're going to play this like a video game and go through just a few levels. Um, and level one is kind of the origins of this whole thing. Um, so, Steve, you want to tell your story? Yeah, so uh, when I had like a part time job, I finally had enough money to buy a Sega Genesis. I grew up with Super Nintendo. Money and I bought it and I took it up to my HDTV and put a game called Shadow Run in a lot of text. And I'm like, damn, this guy on eBay said sell me a bunk of Genesis, it looks like garbage on that. So uh, I did more research and found out there's actually a way to get better uh, picture quality out of old consoles and for a, a project at uh, electronics project at community college, I built a circuit board that did this for Genesis and Genesis. So that was where it all started. Yeah. So kind of a, just a quick basic background on that is that uh, these, you know, the consoles we grew up with generate video in the RGB color space, not usable on North American TVs. What they did was press all that information of red, green, and blue down into a single wire called Positive video to the yellow wire you can see. And when you transmit data like that to the TV, the TV has to undo all that back to RGB, and that process is imperfect and it looks like garbage. Um, in, more for, in particular with uh, the way some of these old consoles did it, uh, the Sega Genesis was particularly bad. But in any case, that RGB signal actually lives at the connector uh, on the back of the console. Uh, it just couldn't be utilized at the time. But in, in North America. In Europe, Europe America. Use, yeah. So the whole, so this, the whole reason that exists on the back is because in Europe they could make use of that thing. Um, so we're taking advantage of the fact that that was there, and the circuit is converting that to component video, which is now common on HDTVs, although disappearing <laughs> in some cases. Um, kind of quick background on the whole idea behind this. But when you do that, you get an equivalent of the original high quality signal. And when Steve was able to get that down to the size that fit in the SNES connector there, that's when it kind of clicked that this was potentially a project that we could actually sell. It was, uh, it sat on the shelf for, uh, it's, it was 2008 when I first made it, and then in 2012 is when this happened. Yeah. Like, okay, maybe is, that, is that the step in between there? Um, yeah. Kind of, in different versions, actually. So, 
What made you want to keep working? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know the answer. Self loathing. Did this one just keep falling out on this one? Or like... No, this one uh, is it, actually more complicated. Uh, uh, it actually, the order is actually more like this. Well, actually, no. It, it, it's more complicated. It's just different versions of the circuit board. Yeah. So, before we were going to make this company the obvious question, is does anyone actually care? It might be cool to us, um, but that doesn't mean anything if no one's going to back you. Um, we have some evidence going into this whole thing that uh, people do care. Uh, there's tons of retro gaming expos out there right now. The forums are filled with people who kind of do this in a hacked way. Um, it's not like a consumer-ready product. It's just kind of piecing together some things. Um, and then on this, the Reddit has more forums about retro games than you can possibly imagine. Uh, so, reason for us to, to go after this. And my whole theory behind this is, you know, we're in our 30s now, we have jobs that leave us with a little bit of income at the end of the day, and it's cool to spend that on reliving our childhood. Um, it's a good time for this. If we would have gone after this 10 years ago, I don't think we could have done it. So when we realized that, that was kind of the, the time to start turning this into a company. And the first thing was doing all those things that you have to do. Registered as an official company with the city and with the federal government. Got an official, you know, tax ID number. Yeah. yeah. Had to start learning how to do uh, finances. Uh, so that's kind of like a general theme of this talk is we're engineers by training. This forced us to do a million other things that we are not comfortable doing, we're not experts in. We don't like doing. We don't want to be doing, to be and it eats away at engineering time, but it has to be done. Uh, <coughs> so learning how to keep financial books, super important. At first it was slow going and easy. Now it's a giant mess and headache to deal with. Um, we also had to learn how to be law experts, <laughs> create NDAs. My brother's over there, he signed an NDA. <laughs> One of the first people that had a prototype of our product. Um, <laughs> I want to sell the thing on eBay. No, it's just like, uh, we had other people, and we had to make everyone do it. It had to be consistent. Yeah. Right now. You can't just be like, oh, you're going to go out, let's go. Yeah. We threw together a website, um, had to do a little bit of web design and um, deal with that whole thing. Um, we learned how to contract out labor to people, so these business cards uh, were designed by our graphic designer friend. Um, he also designed our logo, Marion, who is legally distinct from <laughs> Any other fictional characters that exist? Is that a beret? <laughs> Who says? <laughs> Who's your lawyer? Yeah. <laughs> I told you, we're legal experts now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, more along the lines of does anyone care, we decided to prove that to ourselves by going to a video game convention, um, just setting up a little demo. We went to Video Gamers United, the first run of their conference, and got a booth for pretty cheap, and set up a couple TVs of a Sega Genesis and a Super Nintendo. We did something really cool, that, which is we used a switch in the opposite way that you typically use it. We used it to determine what video um, was coming out of the console. So press a button and see what it looks like in composite video, switch it over to uh, component video. You can see the difference in the wall. And Twitter or Facebook? Twitter or Facebook? We haven't used those things. So. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're 
I didn't want to, to kibosh it. I wanted to, <laughs> want to sabotage it. I didn't want to do this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, didn't work out. <laughs> I think we were originally thinking about it, asking for 15000 Yeah. Um, we ended up asking for $25,000. Um, so, yeah, we hired a couple of our buddies. Took an insane amount of hours to film a professional looking film Kickstarter video. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, we had to do but, reshoots. But it's important having a video that looks, that shows off that you're confident. Yeah. At least yeah. something. Even though it's logical, someone could be really good at making a video and be bad at engineering, uh, manufacturing, but the other way around. Yeah. Here's people confident. Yeah. 
the microwave open behind you. Uh, that, that was part of the whole gag. Yeah, you can go to our website. Short. That was a video. Yeah, it's yeah. Not another another gag. Yeah, we just we threw. We tried to add a bunch of cute. There was a yeah. car crash scene in there. And, you know, a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, lap <laughs> up there is a prototype cable that we use that outputs both composite and component video to uh, so we can show the difference simultaneously. Um, that was our, one of our Kickstarter awards that we had mentioned where people could get their name in the software and have it actually burned to a actual cartridge. Um, and then here's a live stream that we did to demo the product. Uh, we also did things like interviews, Podcasts leading up to this, contact with a ton of people in the community to get the word out. This was not just like we launched it and hoped for the best. I mean, we did a ton of preparation and groundwork so that when we launched, all these people would retweet us uh, and you know, talk about us on their podcast. No, sort of thing. except for positive reaction, there is all kinds of people who gave us negative reaction. Yeah, good point. That, that was a big savior to the, to the whole thing was that there were some forums that had found out about us, um, didn't like the way we had branded uh, the product originally. Well, the name of the company, yeah. uh, because it technically doesn't output HD. My goal is to make a company that makes a product that works with HD TVs, but just because the signal itself is not compliant with HD, based off the word on the tape oil. Yeah. Not even close to that. So that kind of helped us rebrand a lot of things and make yeah. very clear that we were not upscaling the console to HD. So yeah, we ended up raising like four, almost forty-one thousand dollars. You don't get all of that. Uh, <laughs> Amazon and Kickstarter take their cuts about close to ten percent. Uh, right. Something to be aware of. Another thing to be aware of is that if you do this at the end of the year, like we did you will see $40,000 in income without very many expenses to deduct against them, and you will have to pay taxes on them. Oh, Something to keep in mind. So level one complete, just kind of a quick summary. You know, a ton of work to do all this stuff. Um, legal protection was something we were very concerned about and wanted to have you know, an LLC where something goes wrong we created a Samsung note that exploded <laughs> in people's consoles. It, th those things matter. Um, Did you do that in your own way? Yep. Okay. So you didn't like go to that one way? No. Yeah. So we have a physical. Uh, um, hold on. So what's in that cartridge? Okay. Uh, so it's just uh, our test software uh, that was on the that Kickstarter page. Um, so you, uh, it's the like EA Pro? Yeah. The color selection. It's mainly for development, and uh, we were intending to use it for verifying cables and stuff. <coughs> so, yeah, most important point is any time estimates that you make, it's going to be way worse than that. But at least at this point, your score is only negative thousand dollars because it doesn't cost that much to get here. Um, but then development and production. How, how much did it cost to get the LLC, and how much would have to so? We use true. legal zoom, that's a few hundred bucks to do that LLC. Like, use what? Uh, legal zoom. Okay. And then you gotta review every year. Yeah. Uh, There's ongoing costs, but. How did you determine who was safe in the corporation? It took a while. We looked up that whole Delaware and the Wyoming thing, and we just, I thought I have a part of the line group uh, here in Honors, and I had some guy with a lawyer in there, and we gave me some advice, but basically, you're selling physical products. You want to be incorporated in the space because you're actually selling the product. If you're making software and stuff like that doesn't have it's not tangible, then you can look into that other stuff. But if you're making hardware, um, then you want to incorporate it. Why is that? Um, it's sales tax and going through all the loopholes to avoid everything is yeah. uh, time and money sink. Uh, so it just says avoid that stuff. Uh, it's not where he's a huge corporate lawyer, so he, he knows all, a lot of the stuff. And he's just giving you advice saying it's not worth it. Or, and you're a type of creating a 
big corporation, Delaware may make sense. <laughs> or an LLC. And if you have digital products, if you're developing an iPhone app, probably yes. makes yeah. more sense. Well, but even like, I don't know about like Indiana or Wisconsin or whatever. So even that is not, you know, there's no significant savings or just. Um, there, there might have been if I wanted to move there. Okay. But I. For this, my for this my kind of house, like house and office and everything right. all in the same spot. I have to, that's not taking advantage of cool. to actually afford this. <laughs> so. so cool. We, we um, turned out to find a manufacturer for all this. And uh, the original idea um, was to build out the cable in parts. Um, and then they'd have these uh, JST connectors on them that you just plug in and we'd assemble them here. So we'd get all these parts made separately, and we'd just build them, um, yeah, do, the, do that part ourselves. So we started by going to Alibaba and just looking up people in China that made cables. Um, spent a lot of late nights talking to people in China. Um, and basically trying to convey to them what we want, <laughs> which is not easy. Uh, but we end up sending them drawings like this for the specific things we want. Um, piece on the top is the connector that would go into the back of the Genesis. Um, the piece on the bottom uh, comes out the other end and gives you your component video cable. Um, those are nice drawings. Who did those? I, I did on the old. Yeah, these are. Yeah. Then there's more of there's you know like bonds and title blocks. Well, we just did that. What 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 software did you use? Draw that I use Microsoft Visual. You know. So what was your like level of knowledge for like bringing some kind of product, like making a physical product before going into this? I guess he had some experience I, through his work. I work, my day job is a uh, electrical engineer at this uh, aerospace company that makes cabin entertainment for business jets. So we have a small factory, it's a small volume. Um, we have a factory in the same building. And so I know that type of manufacturing is lower volume where I actually have physical people that do a lot of steps, it's not automated. So that's the extent of what I do. I know these drawings and stuff. Yeah, a lot of this stuff was just learning. Yeah. Um, just learn as you go. A lot of stuff. Yeah, we had to make mistakes. And, yeah. um, so we'd get back things um, that looked a lot like our drawings. We'd test them out. Um, you know, there were some issues here and there. Some of them were just too noisy for our application. But really, what sunk this whole thing is that it just wouldn't scale. If we had gone this route, we would have made a thousand cables for our Kickstarter backers and been done as a company. Um, maybe just gone on to something else and tried that, but we wouldn't have had cables to sell to other people. It just wasn't feasible. So, Steve will probably talk more on this slide, but this is. Um, when we started talking to a contract manufacturer recommended to us by a friend. This was in parallel. Yeah, in they parallel. were talking to his Chinese girlfriend. There were a couple of guys there too. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. Uh, so the thought was how do we go from a prototype to like. Because at this point we had prototypes made using that method because we had to deliver them to Kickstarter back in 2001. We're glad we had that reward moment because that was a stepping stone. Yeah, it forced us to try to stick to deadlines. Uh, and it also gave our backers confidence that we started to reach. Yeah. So you were you were you were using one-off construction techniques at this point. Yes. And um, like advanced hobbyist stuff. And, and how are you mold, how are you doing the molding? It wasn't a mold over mold. Plastic box that I harvested from PS, well, some of the PSC components. And I cut holes in them. That was another bottleneck to the previous 
plan was we try very hard to get someone to sell us those plastic boxes and oh, no yeah. one would. Because they, they wanted to sell a full table. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of what drew the size too. Yeah. Can I just ask about the distinction that you said um, previously that you didn't want to have on the tier, but this one was like you really want to have it? Because it wasn't like unrelated like the test cartridge stuff. Okay. It, it didn't get us to our final product, our goal. Just to clarify, I'm just not, not clear like what's the difference between this and the other other like, so Kickstarter ones. We're, we, we're talking about it, the, 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 the rewards that you can have to the backers. Right. It's an artifact that doesn't have to make any sense for Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you could you pay, pay a little bit more and get an early prototype cable. Okay, so that's all it is. Yeah. Early okay. yep. Who, who hands on it? Wow. Yeah, we'll show some pictures. There's more of that stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> it gets grim. Yeah. <laughs> so to do this, press down. <laughs> uh, we had to get, you know, this manufacturer to effectively make these circuit boards for us and have them test okay. Uh, we had to buy molds and have them create um, an overmolding. Uh, Process. Did they, yeah, they, they're, when I showed them that uh, prototype, they're like, oh, that board's small enough to be overmolded, which I'm about a huge plus because it's cheaper to make tooling for overmolding. Uh, and it's a good thing I forced myself to cram it down that PSC box because it was small enough to do overmolding. Well, this is a design for manufacturing decision that you made, which is kind of huge. Yeah. This, is, this isn't a little detail. Right. Um, so somebody cut this die out for you because this molding die, and it was to fit your fit your board yep. that you had. Um, so that right there, dies are expensive. At least in the United States, they're really expensive. They're like several thousand dollars. I don't yep. know. I don't know what the cost there. So if you had that made, you'd made a strong commitment to that being the way to do it. Yep. By that point. And can, can you yeah, tell me one more time what the what the options for large scale manufacturing were uh, for, for this as opposed to this, like as opposed to overmolding it? Uh, we didn't have any other options for large scale. Yeah. We just had the, the small scale. We we'll probably just do it once and stop. And then this was our other option. So <coughs> potting potting a board was never a, an option. Why not? Um, potting a board ourselves. Uh, well, having it, having it made that way, you said this was cheap, so you could like instead of having the mold made, you could pot a board in a, in a container in potting epoxy, electrical potting epoxy. Okay. I mean, it's it's it's, it's another way that, of doing it. That's effectively the same. Thing. Well, this yeah. is squirt molded, isn't it? This, this thermal this, plastic. This is no, this is not hard pot. How many units did you need to sell for the Kickstarter? Kickstarter, we had a, close to a thousand. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, this company started sending us back samples of things at some point. Uh, uh, this, this, is, this was the point where, before we got here, we decided, like, we're not doing this long ago. We yeah. want the large scale. We want to be a company in the future. So, our board designs and everything, we started sending us samples because they were designing all over there. Yeah. And as they were sending things, they were testing all of it. Um, so we went through a lot of iterations of the cable. This is what ended up being a custom spun cable for our application so that you would not get a super noisy cable. This is from the, one of the noisy ones that was uh, sent yeah. to us. Um, yeah, we so found a good cable through like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the ones that they use to make your standard composite video, which is the yellow, white, and red, it's flimsy and it, it doesn't work. That's more shielding. Yeah. Very cool color. Um, and then, you know, eventually we get to the point where we get an overmolded cable sample um, for us to test out. Um, and even at this point, we had to go back to them with a big list of changes that we wanted to make, um, including super small things like changing the font size uh, on all that uh, labeling, which 
seemed like it would be a, <laughs> an easy thing. And you to brought do. an interesting point. Like this picture is good. Uh, initially, we had a dark sun and a light sun for the prices switch. And he brought this up. He's like, what if they did that backwards? What if they turned it backwards? Yeah. And then we're like, we, we have some project in there. And you're like, it's only put one icon and it doesn't matter. Yep. So that's one little like, manufacturing thing you gotta mind. What process is to do the printing? Is it like a stamp or your filtering? Or it's a yeah. So did you, did you guys find you were like constantly having to question whether or not you were going to get what you actually wanted back? Like, and you had to make business decisions and design decisions based on that? Yeah, yeah I think that's reasonable. I mean, I wouldn't say like I was sitting there like all day panicked yeah. about it, but yeah. When you're making any decision, you have to think of the worst case scenario. <laughs> if they got this wrong, what would be the Wow. Um, how much cost was involved in actually iterating this thing? I mean, when you're making all these little changes, are they charging you <coughs> all along the process? We did a one time, before we started, we did a one time in our not recruiting engineering for all the tooling, and that included a few samples. Uh, and then once we approved the sample, then we put it in production for it. Gotcha. Um, so our, our case is over that later? Or? Yeah. Okay. Um, What's that? Did you, I mean, did not go to China. We uh, we were dealing with a contract manufacturer in Toronto, yep. and they have a factory in China. But we haven't gone to the factory. We're probably going to go next. take about a month off for Chinese New Year, which makes hitting deadlines very stressful when you are trying to deliver a product to um, people. Um, so there's a few stories uh, off this line. Um, they were originally supposed to create samples of a certain board, but it turned out that they couldn't do that fast enough for us to get an order placed before Chinese New Year. So Steve had to do this. They're falling behind, and, they're, and I'm like, okay, is there anything we can do to help them? Shouldn't have asked that question. <laughs> so, yeah, they said, yeah, you can make the circuit for us for, so that we can. Yeah, if you get us the circuit board before Christmas, yeah. then they can send them to China. They'll work over Christmas and New Year's break and everything to get the samples. Assembled. Our Christmas and New Year's are not yeah. there. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, they still North America. They, they, yeah. they, like they, they don't get it off because they're getting the whole month off. Like February. Yeah, pretty much all of February. It's gone. Um, so Steve toaster up in these boards and hand placed all those components. So it was this was beginning of December. They asked us to make adjustments to the board because there's a switch and an audio jack on there and overmolding was getting in the way and they asked us to move the switch out and the jack out there to reroute the whole board. And then I had to order board super swift service from Osh Park. Saves us so many times. <laughs> uh, order all the parts, order stencils, uh, and build it. it was all within two weeks yeah. I had to do that because I had to ship it out a couple of days before Christmas. So doing a batch of six boards for one of the consoles took about 10 hours. So we had to do that for two straight. consoles. Yeah, 10 hours straight. So under microscope, hand placing, oh, 04 or two components, 100 of them per board. Um, um, and, and that was easier than the molding change? What? You what? said the molding was hitting the switch, or what? Uh, uh, so it, it, it just, it's all kind of related in one big mess. So. Yeah. Um, when we first got these drawings back from uh, the manufacturer, we noticed this problem first, which is the jack, probably make sense to handle the cable. It's too deep. For, yeah. It's too deep. If you're going to plug yeah. the thing in, it's not going to reach all the way, right? Um, yeah. So I'm like, I noticed that, and they sent me a step file, and I was in the model program, like, this is just like, it needs to be sticking out, not sticking in. Uh, so, drill press. <laughs> so I told them, like, that's unsuccessful. We can't have that. And they're like, okay. And then, like, you need 
that we need to explain more. Yeah. Okay. So, and if it wasn't trivial. More that looked like this, um, completely scrapped and redone. That's pretty much the middle here. Yeah. But then it turns out that the other side had to be redone too because uh, Overmold was getting into the jack. We had a little actuator. The switch. The switch. Um, was getting into the actuator and clogging that up. So that had to be extended out. So that was another scrap, a lot of the board, and relay it out. Actually helped I think us, that one was easier. Actually helped us out though because that allowed us to change from a two and a half millimeter to a three and a half millimeter yeah. audio jack. Uh, and then if you came to uh, Steve's talk about a month ago here, he did a whole presentation on this because the test fixture that was used to quality check boards both on our end and in China uh, was like a project in and of itself. Um, they would not put assembled boards into overmolds unless they tested it. They're responsible for building the tester. If you overmold something and bust it, it's garbage. So, so, <laughs> so they'd be pretty confident that this thing was going to do its job. It's in that box. Yeah. yeah. That this test fixture had to be able to test both plain um, or just boards and then assembled cables. Um, it also had to be able to test both consoles and run through enough tests that we had to write to have some level of confidence that everything was installed correctly. And you had to go back to that? Or? Yeah. Yep. So so we built four of them. Okay. But it was, it took like a single model or something? So you could you build the test there? Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of iterations on that too. This is like, this is like, oh, I'm just gonna go like get my board right and then go to China and have them made and they'll pot them for me. No, they're like, but by the way, you spent <laughs> six months building a test for Yes. Wow. Just by the way. So per hour you probably didn't make that much money. It's like we lost money per hour. Yeah. It's a negative. Yeah. 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 How many started it? Maybe a thousand. Yeah. Negative thousand. How many hardware revisions did you actually go through? Of the board? Yeah, like the, of the board the cable? before you got to the, uh, the yeah. first deliverable. I mean, uh, it started at B was the first one we gave to Kickstarter Factory, and we're at G now. I can't count letters. You do it. <laughs> so, of course, as you're doing all this and falling further and further behind, it's very stressful because there are people sitting there waiting. Uh, yeah. A lot of work into doing this. Again, uh, what it was going to cost to ship to all these different countries. And it was based on the weight of the prototype and the shipping rates in 2014. The weight of the cable more than doubled, and shipping rates went insane in the last year. So that really crushed us. Yeah, it's just kind of a stack of updates. So, okay, level two complete. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> a couple major points, having that North American uh, point of contact so that they just dealt with China and we dealt with them, huge plus. Um, tons and tons of non-trivial changes, the smallest of which can eat up all of your time. And when you're dealing with a company uh, in China, communicating with them is slow. So a sentence that we can exchange here in five <coughs> minutes might take you an entire week. It's a long process. So instead of three times your worst estimate, you know, like 10 times your worst estimate. And at this point, you're talking on the scale of $100,000 or more. So this is not what we actually spent, but I wanted to give people kind of a perspective on the amount of money that you're in at certain points. And what, if, what was the difference between manufacturing there and other places? I don't know if we have an answer to that. Um, it is more and kind of similar kinds of process. Yeah. We, we 
encourage you now if you have a look. And especially now that we've built this relationship with this company, um, they know us very well. We've gone and visited them. Um, they are pretty dedicated. And they're also... Which is the company in Toronto. Yeah. They're also <coughs> focused on helping companies that start out small. <coughs> a lot of places, doing a production run of a couple thousand is not enough. We had to go manufacture ten thousand of these. We wouldn't have been able to afford them without taking them. Home. So and that, that kind of drives a lot of money raised in the Kickstarter. Get bonus. All right, level three, which is really the kind of the last level. Um, sales and distribution. Um, so we got our first set of tables. So, Steve alluded to this earlier. Uh, we actually had them finish the Kickstarter batch and ship that to us first, and then go back and finish the rest of those. We paid a little extra because we were behind, and we wanted to take that weight over our shoulders of getting stuff Kickstarter. We paid for air shipping just enough to fill the Kickstarter, and then we we'll wait for the rest of the more to come by later. Which actually turned out to be a really good idea anyway. This is a picture of opening the first box, which is the most terrifying moment. Um, I was sitting uh, on the phone, or next to my phone, waiting for Steve to call me because he had just picked up a couple samples of the final, and we had no idea if we had just received a thousand tables that didn't work. So that was kind of terrifying. Um, Turned out they did work, but uh, one thing on the first picture, mm -hmm. uh, the the shipping company could have just dropped that pallet off at any address. We had to uh, get it dropped off at a dock. We went to the dock up there for me to go and then pack them all in CRP and bring them over. But that place where we uh, How did you know to rent the dock? They asked us if. <laughs> We were shipping it to if they have a loading dock. Yeah. They were like, oh, I'll call you so back. We were originally <laughs> planning on doing this to a, a garage. Yeah. Like yeah. A house garage. Yeah. So you can't get a lift gate on a truck. So that, that may be more expensive than what you did. Right. The, the, the truck didn't have a lift gate. Yeah, exactly. Well, a lift gate is a thing that it's like an elevator for the back yeah. of the truck. And it, it needed to go right to the back. a pallet that big would still require a forklift to get it off, even if you did get it across the Yep. So we hand tested every single one of the first 1,000 tables that came to us. It took about four full days of very little sleep and a lot of coffee and energy. other energy drinks and nicotine. Did uh, they actually all work? Uh, no, not 100%. Uh, but that's that was the unexpected benefit of doing this was by the time we finished this, we knew every single error that we could possibly see. So when we shipped out the other tables that we ended up eventually selling to people, if somebody ran into an issue, we knew what it was going to be. And even before that, we relayed the issues back to our contact inspector. And they went back and made sure that they yeah. weren't on that other shipment that we called. Yeah, so Example of that, there were some grounding issues that we discovered um, in these uh, RCA connectors. They went back, snipped them off, and replaced them before sending us that new batch of tables, which was another delay in getting things, but it had to be done. Um, they asked us what our percentage failure was. We were like, 5%, 5%, that's way too high. They yeah. expect us less than one. And we're going through that. And so that kind of leads to another point was when we discovered that ground failure, that was not something that was programmed in wherever that test fixture is. Yeah, you actually can't test it. You can't test it, so and it was not something that we you know foresaw. So as soon as we figured out or as soon as we found a cable that had this issue in our, our testing, um, that meant we had to adding new tests as we were going through this. 
And one little piece of map uh, to share is if a test takes you one minute to do, if you add a one minute test to your 1,000 cable process, even though that's divided up two people, that's 500 minutes or eight and a half hours you just added to the test. <coughs> when we were doing this, we were taking these cables out of their bags, untwisting a twist tie, hooking them up, recording, well, for, we didn't do this for all of them, but for a fir first 100 or so, we were plugging them into the laptop and recording measurements um, into a text editor. But after that, we were still plugging the cables into a TV, making sure they worked, plugging them into the text fixture, making sure that it passed. It took a lot of time. And then this additional test where we had to sit there with um, multimeter and tap all the grounds to make sure they were connected was another big issue. After that, put the twist tie back on, put it in a bag, tape it up, and pack a box for four days straight. Kind of miserable, but in the end, worth it. Totally. Is, is, is it you, something that you did, like expect other people would want to do if they're trying to create a product like this? I mean, to do the QA process yourself? To know your product is. I think yeah, it was totally worth it on that front, and then also I mean, your Kickstarter backers are special to us. Yeah. And I wanted to make sure they got fully functional shape. We didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. Yes. In spite of your effort, how many uh, returns did you get? Zero. Yeah, I don't think we've had returns. We've had issues where we've replaced mm -hmm. the cable. Nobody's ever wanted. Well, I mean, I mean, like, at, in spite of in spite of your effort, you know, there's still going to be stuff Kick that doesn't work. Kickstarter backers. Yeah. I think there was one that had an issue. Yeah. That's damn fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's 0.1% yeah. on the top of the cables. Wow. That's all good that we're running so long here with. We're getting there. Um, so once we repacked everything up, we had to get them distributed. That was another whole fiasco of dealing with a company whose name I won't mention here, but didn't do a great job for us. They, um, this is our business model. Can we handle your distribution? I was like, okay, yeah, tell me more. That sounds great. Their whole thing at the time was, we can do this because we're doing bulk orders and we're focusing on Kickstarter uh, people. We can do this at or below the cost of you walking to the USPS. All right, perfect. That sounds awesome. Um, in the year and a half or more before we actually delivered, their business model changed wasn't communicated to us. And prices went up a lot. And after they started shipping the first 100, and we were monitoring this uh, through their dashboard, the prices were way higher than they expected. Turns out they had investors, and investors wanted to see profit now. Um, also ran into issues with the speed in which they shipped things out. It took like an extra week. Um, was that something where you had like an agreement long term, like you have to decide, or obviously that was not the case? That's not the case. Okay. Yeah, it was kind of a, a mistake on our part. Would that be something like in the future that you would be sure to negotiate with us on? Yeah, you know, uh, so we switched distributors right. and we negotiated that all up front. Cool. Mm -hmm. And so they like made boxes and labels and packages? Yeah, they did everything. They pick and pack and ship it out. Yeah. And then were a total pain in the ass to deal with um, because they didn't really like email. They didn't want to put things down in writing. They wanted to Skype all the time. Uh, wasn't wasn't good for you. Maybe offline. Um, but then we started getting images back on Twitter and Facebook and email from people. That was probably the first time in a while that we were actually happy with this project. <laughs> People were sending us tons and tons of examples of how happy they were with the project. People also started experimenting with the cables. This guy took a Game Gear and built a consoleized version of it with 
a jack that matched to our cable. This person in France used our cable with a GameCube, which we don't officially support, um, because the North American ones just flat out don't work with our cable. But the ones in Europe are designed a little differently, and it turns out they will. Hmm. Official component cables for GameCube are about 300 bucks. Wait, wait. In uh, Europe, it's um, uh, Paul. Yeah, from France. Yeah. And your cables are in PSC. I work on both. We went through tons of design efforts. Make it universal. Back when we ran the Kickstarter, we actually made people respond in their survey if they wanted Pale or NPSC, because at the time we didn't know. So did you have separate cables? Or we, we, we all along we said we don't know. If we might have to do separate cables, it turned out we didn't. We were able to get it all in the circuit. Different line, line line. It actually has nothing to do with NTSC PAL for some reason. Our SNES especially, they had different uh, video driving circuits on the PALs, different not over the And they suggested that we accept both of those in the country. So it took a couple months to design. transistor structure. How much was your cable? Uh, well, at Kickstarter we sold them for a donation of thirty-five dollars, uh, and then through our store at forty-five. Um, and on eBay, and on eBay there are one hundred. <laughs> <laughs> really? And you guys also had like, you know, like oh, you're plugging into the Neo Geo, right? Yeah, that's another thing. Uh, the Neo Geo has a very similar output jack on the back, but it's slightly different. So we had to actually send out a notice to warn people not to do that because you can totally bend the pins. Um, they make those DIN connectors with a C shape and with a U shape. One of the cables is a U and a C, and if you don't look, it's very easy to fix those. And I'll also too, uh, it seems like on the Genesis cable, like gonna maybe call it some adapters or something like that. Did you figure that into the design of your original circuit? Like so that it was kind of the side of the yeah. something else. Yeah, yeah this part I mean we we've got manufacturing costs down. We we but, ac we actually no we, we did for that we actually put an extra wire in there to that for the future that we did actually Decided, are you going to stay in this business and do new products? Or are you going to yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> so we set up a storefront. Um, so this was, um, you know, more design decisions. We originally were going to do it in Squarespace, where our website was hosted. We ended up scrapping that and going with Shopify. You have to make decisions like, am I going to sell people with PayPal or not? And pay PayPal fees. Um, which are pretty high, so all that stuff starts cutting in your margins, which are already not that high. Um, but eventually, you know, we got up a page, we sell stuff now, we're sold out right now. Uh, of the main cable, the but accessories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We also had to become customer service experts. Um, so we have spreadsheets like this, where if there is an issue that people report, um, goes into the spreadsheet, we keep track of the order number to make sure uh, it's somebody that actually bought the cable from us and not on eBay, uh, what the issue is, constantly updating with status updates, uh, and just, you know, a variety of information there that we can, because if you have a 1% error rate on 3,000 cables, that's, you know, 30 emails to keep track of, and that is... And there's also a bunch of erroneous. Yeah, a bunch of people don't really have issues. They just took the red audio cable and plugged it into the red video slot and the red video and the red audio. And they're like, oh, the cable is one of the biggest ones. But there's others. Yeah. You also get to deal with angry people. Uh, an example of an email we got after our first sale where we sold out a Super Nintendo cable in two minutes. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have infinite money to get infinite cables with all the people. 
it's things that you have to learn to deal with gracefully in the company. I, if it was me and my personal email, I would have responded a little differently. Did you take his money? Did you do it? I don't know if that guy ended up. Uh, so we, we don't no, we don't do it. But I don't know if that guy ended up getting the cable when we got more stock. Yeah. So as far as the customer service, did you find it was a, a more of the uh, like user error type stuff, or was it like you guys actually like to take action? Uh, we have 11,000 square feet of shop behind this wall right here. This is not the hacker space. Um, if you would like a tour of the place, please fill out a liability form and slip it into a little slot on the top of the box that says, whatever it says. Liability releases. It says liability releases. And uh, we'll give a few minutes to do that, and then we'll take a walk through the rest of the facility and come back here, and you can drill these gentlemen with questions. Yeah. So, so we'll wrap up really quick here. All right. So here's kind of our summary. Um, doing things yourself is always good. We kind of went over that. Um, and everything takes 100 times longer than um, The epilogue to all this is, what do you do next? So we sold our product for more than it cost us to make it, X labor. Um, and other money we put in. And the money we put in, invested into ourselves. But it's not enough to do everything we want to do. Are we going to order more cables? Because there are people that didn't get a cable. Uh, it was sold out and couldn't get one. Uh, we get those emails on a daily basis. When are you getting more cables? Um, or are we going to put it towards some new products? People already have cables, don't want us to make more Yeah, they, they want, want to make stuff. other products, and which of those products are you going to do? This is not something that we've completely solved how to make these decisions yet. I mean, we're kind of still winging it a little bit, but you know, we have a general sense of where we're going, but you know, we're, we're not experts at, at this, right? So, we yeah. are the smartest people in the room. No. Um, a couple last points is, I actually have this as my LinkedIn description, kind of as a joke, but kind of not, um, just because I've had to learn how to do a million things that I don't want to be doing, uh, as it turns out. Software and getting it to play on a Sega Saturn so that we can write, software and take measurements of that and we develop a product for it. It's not fun to me to be ending my work day, popping up my HD retrovision email and then start answering some <coughs> tickets. Um, so you have a million tasks you have to do before you can do anything else. Um, people like to ask us what we do in our free time. We don't know what that means. No time is free when you own a company. Um, every minute you're spending not working on your company you're kind of missing out on something that needs to be done. So most important thing that I can convey and we need to be talked about all the time is not to value your time and labor at zero dollars. A lot of people make this mistake um, and never give anyone time. <laughs> Through all this, you may, with all the negativity that has been thrown around, ask why bother? It's a good philosophical question. Um, at the end of the day, for me at least, if I woke up tomorrow and didn't have this, didn't have to worry about anything anymore, all that stress was gone, I don't think I would be happy. Um, it's nice to own something. It's nice to take ownership in something and get to see. When, when I see somebody in Chile send me a picture, using our cable, like, it's, it's hard to put in a word how cool that is. So all the shit that you have to deal with, there are things that make it worse. I don't know if Steve's got a different perspective on it. Maybe he just doesn't think it's worth it. We shouldn't do it. <laughs> uh, I mean, like you said, when the pictures started rolling in, uh, the I, there was a tear down. There you are. Because that's the first time, like, it actually felt worth it. So, I mean, 